transition curves. As you may have noticed from previous videos, I'm trying to relay the track so that it runs from the scenic side of the layout around to the fiddle yard side. And so it has to go through 180 degree turn. Here is a method I've used before using curtain rail or flexi track itself to produce what I, um, I won't say naively, but what I understood to be a transition curve. It's a transition in that I force the, in this case, uh, rail, it's equivalent of curtain track, to be in line with the track to start with and allow it to form its own curve. And you can do the same thing with the flexi track itself as long as you're careful about the joiners, the rail joiners or fish plates. However, um, it wasn't obvious to me at first, but it's two transition curves joined halfway. So the curve starts shallower than my very faint green line, which is a pure arc, becomes sharper than the arc at 45 degrees away through, flattens out in the middle, is sharper than the arc there, so tighter radius, and flattens out down there. Now the actual distance <coughs> is such that the pure arc is 23 inches radius, so it's a 46 inch uh, gap between uh, the two sides for the innermost track. And um, as such, I'm tempted to just follow the radius because the transition between a 23 inch radius and straight track is quite smooth. I'm going to be using, as the, in this case, Pico Flexible Track, which, if you don't force it, would form some sort of transition curve. But the point here is that, uh, from what I've seen briefly, if you use a CAD, uh, approach to transition curves then you would have a slow start at each end the steeper part in the middle and then slow at the end because this is plastic it's possible to distort it move it um, and pull in those two quadrant corners to force the uh, sharper point to be at the top so you can lay out your curve uh, as you as you like uh, but as I say I'd be interested in comments uh, about this let's call it practical way of achieving some sort of transition curve but it's actually a double transition curve using the flexible track itself to form the transition curve or producing something which is more accurate by drawing arcs on different pieces of paper and linking the arcs together into a transition curve. Um, so that's really more like an elliptical shape. And maybe I should have known that this would form more of an ellipsis. That's it for transition curves. <clears throat> uh, but for the end of the video, um, if you're looking at this because you're interested in uh, layout design, I would recommend that you look on RM Web for the LEDs um, description of how he's built Bradfield and you see it from scratch uh, to its current state in a very short space of time. Uh, the reason I say that is this is a, uh, a master piece of uh, layout construction, uh, something I might aspire to but uh, don't ever truly expect to achieve given my techniques and the time I put into it. My baseboard construction for this extension is a simple flat top with um, I think it's nine millimeter ply in this case uh, with uh, planed uh, battens and I don't know what the metric size is but it's the uh, very common size it's certainly not uh, 2b1 it might have been what people call 2b1 planed all around uh, screwed. Uh, some of the buttons have been glued uh, to form a fairly robust flat top for this section and I'll be building up the contours where I want contours using foam. 
At the other end, uh, I'm going to try a more open construction method and allow the scenery to drop below the normal baseboard level. Uh, but this one's just the quick and easy method of producing a flat top uh, and then laying the track onto that flat top with, as you can see in the background, something elevated. Thank you.